Colleagues and loved ones are mourning the death of veteran newsman Bill Stout, a man who defined and embodied the highest standards of journalism. That's our top story tonight on Action News at 6. Good evening, I'm Penny Griego. And I'm Ross Becker. The tributes continue to pour in tonight for our Bill Stout. He died this morning at Cedar sinai Medical Center of cardiac arrest at age 62. Bill spent 36 years with CBS, 24 of them right here at Channel 2, where his commentaries hardly lacked any candor. His last was just two days ago. What he thought about the DMV putting up those drive-up booths. It's still amazing because when it comes to bonehead decisions, nobody comes close to state government in action. Two colleagues share these feelings about Bill. He uh, was the consummate journalist. He loved what he did. He had a curious mind, but at the same time, he was a very sensitive guy. And on the outside, he may have appeared gruff and uh, sometimes even harsh. On the inside, he was really a soft guy with a fine heart. That tough exterior was the only false thing I knew about Stout. Uh, he, he was absolutely honest uh, in his commentaries. He was tougher on his friends than he was his enemies. You never could really pinpoint, uh, you couldn't find his, his bias in very much of anything. He really was an honest man. In a few minutes, we're going to have a special tribute to Bill. Plus, tonight at 11.30, Channel 2 will air a special half-hour program, Bill Stout Remembered. But now, as he would have wanted us to do probably a few minutes ago, we go on with the news. Penny. Bill Stout passed away this morning, but he leaves behind a lifetime of work that may never be rivaled. Longtime friend and colleague Patty Ecker reports. Unfortunately, they were ill-equipped. He was just here on Wednesday evening. His target was the DMV. His style was, as always, with strength, intelligence, and humor. How outrageous can it get? How dumb? Obviously, the lack of fresh air and oxygen has addled the brains of those in charge of the DMV. But then, what else is new? His voice is quieted now. Our newsroom seems ever so empty. Bill Stout's long battle with heart disease is over, but his fight for the best in journalism, for truth over pretense, will go on for years to come. For almost 40 years, he reported events of the world from Los Angeles, Washington, Vietnam, sometimes in the neighborhood. We like to think that he was always ours at Channel 2, but in the early 60s, Bill worked at KTLA Channel 5. It was the era of new technology, live shots, as they came to be called. Bill's baptism with that new technology is classic. You like it despite yeah. this? Well, sure. This only happens about twice a year. Adds a little bit of excitement to the. <laughs> a little bit of excitement. Huh? That's right. How do you like it? I don't much care for it. What Bill cared about was being honest. As a newsman, Bill Stout asked the tough questions, shined his light into murky corners. He growled and humphed and always got the story. Former CBS anchor Joseph Benty knew Bill for more than 20 years. I think Bill was closer to uh, the ideal of afflicting the comfortable and comforting the afflicted than most of us ever are. Bill Stout never let anyone else do his work. He was out there, in the mud, in the ashes, in the story. Even face to face with world leaders, the stout touch was never lost. He is noncommittal. When he came here, I think the big surprise was that he was so short and so round, kind of a uh, visiting Russian dumpling. He could raise his eyebrow like no one else, but his longtime colleague Jess Marlowe says that tough guy pose was a fraud. Uh, he, he was absolutely honest uh, in his commentaries. He was tougher on his friends than he was his enemies. You never could really pinpoint, uh, you couldn't find his, his bias in very much of anything. He really was an honest man, except for that gruff exterior, which was totally false. That softy was not usually seen on television, but occasionally we got a look, like the time his wife's pet birds were featured in a story. I have never asked how much that bird cost. <laughs> Because I know it was so expensive. I know it was so expensive 
that it'll make me furious. <laughs> Those close to him knew Bill Stout made the best pecan pie in Southern California, but he could also bake a politician with his questions. For years, Bill Stout took monthly aim at those he felt were in one way or another betraying the public trust or not doing the job. Those were his Turkey of the Month awards. Friend or foe, no one was exempt, as L.A. Police Chief Darrell Gates found out. Uh, that is one of my prized possessions. Uh, I, I've got it up in a, uh, in a memory case, and uh, it is a prized possession, uh, the golden turkey, and there's no one, no one, no one who could make you out to be a turkey better than Bill Stout. Bill's skill was recognized regularly. He received hundreds of journalism's top awards. He was cited by some of the politicians he Mr. roasted. Bill's and in 1988, he got a star from the town in which he grew up. His star will not dim. There is a Bill Stout legacy which people in the street and in high places alike are seeing. You know who should really look at him and miss him? All those youngsters who want to be good journalists. They should take a look at Bill Stout's work. They should study it. On the day Bill Stout got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, his friend Charles Kuralt flew in from New York. His words to Bill Stout on that day mean even more to us up. on this day. Uh, it is said that Bill had a heart attack last fall. I would just like to mention there's nothing wrong with Bill Stout's heart. Uh, it is the best heart of uh, anybody I know. inevitably come to mind. And we'd like to leave you tonight with some of the moments that we will remember best. Hello. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly welcome to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, <laughs> Mr. Bill Stout. Well, I did uh, grow up around here, just a few blocks down the street, to end up with a star on, on this street uh, is, uh, is more more of an honor that I can really handle. In the past 25 years, more than 300,000 Negroes from other parts of the United States have come to Los Angeles in the hope of escaping evils they had endured with patience. You like it, despite yes. this? Well, sure, this only happens about twice a year. Adds a little bit of excitement to the... <laughs> a little bit of excitement, huh? That's right. How do you like it? I don't much care for it. Though with all those awful things, nobody comes close to the low-life vultures who moved in while dozens of people crushed on the Nimitz Freeway were screaming for help. Ignoring the injured, emptying the pockets of the dead, crawling through vehicles, ripping off anything they could find, the vultures loved it. For their disgusting behavior and barbaric acts, those earthquake looters deserve the most severe punishment, and they are the runaway winners of our golden turkey for October. Now this invite to the unhoused was not just a spur of the moment thing. Sheen obviously thought long and hard before inviting the homeless to hang 10 in Malibu. He wanted to make sure they'd be safe. So along with his welcome, he declared Malibu a nuclear free zone. Should make everyone happy because nothing can ruin a day at the beach more than a nearby nuclear blast. Well, the Democrats must enjoy being packed in like sardines in a can. So they came to Atlanta. Though among the hundreds locked out last night, it's a fair bet at least a few were wishing that General Sherman's destructive march through Georgia could have included this place, too. I, I should have this for only six months since I'm only half Irish. This is a programmed article handling device, what we know as a robot. And today, in the manufacture and use of industrial robots, Japan leads the world. Aside from being Miss Hungary of 1936, she's best known for her numerous marriages, opulent jewelry collection, and her snobbishness, her arrogance. No, Zsa, Zsa Gabor is not an average woman. That's something she can only aspire to. The newspaper goes under, and the Herald may in fact be dying. It's bad news for everyone. There have been offers to buy the paper, but it may be so far gone that even new owners with fresh cash won't be able to keep it alive. That would mean much more than the loss of a business and the loss of jobs. It would be a loss for all of us, because whenever there are fewer sources of information, it's never good news for any community.
argument, and we are going to do it. Well, this is Bill's office, and you can see just by the work that was left over from yesterday, Bill Stout argued to the very end, arguing with the DMV. Here he's getting ready to argue about pay raises for Congress and a file filled with things to argue about. Here are some leftover letters with people who wanted to argue with Bill, no doubt, and you can bet that he would argue back. But there was another side to Bill Stout, and that had to do with pastries and cakes. That's right, pastries and cakes. This is Victor Benish Continental Pastries, where Bill would stop off nearly every day to bring the newsroom goodies. Cholesterol be damned, Bill would say, and so we would eat. It was a daily ritual. Eat sweets with Bill. This is Sally, who uh, runs this place. This is what Bill would come in and buy. I remember these. We used to eat these every day. It's a cheese day, Nish. Yeah. He used to come in here every day, huh? Right, yeah. right. What'd you think of Bill? Um, I found him very nice, thoughtful, intelligent, generally a very nice person. Now, I know he used, to buy, he used to buy people cakes all the time. You get those here too? Right. Right. He used to call me on the phone and used to order birthday cakes. I don't know if it's for everybody, but for a lot of people in the studio. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of names on it. And he was the one who ordered it. He was the one who was picking it up. And I don't know if he paid from his own pocket or whatever. It doesn't matter. But he was... Probably his own uh, pocket, I think, knowing yeah. Bill. He now, was he ever... He was kind of grumpy in the mornings. Was he grumpy here? Uh, not here and not with me. Yeah. So, I don't want to... You'll miss him as we will, huh? Very much so. Very much so. Early next week, friends and acquaintances of Bill Stouts will gather here at the courtyard at KCBS to reminisce, tell old stories, tell a few lies, I'm sure. There will be laughter and, I'm sure, a few tears. And then at some point, people will get up and begin praising Bill Stout. And while that's going on, more than once you will hear the words, Bill would have hated this. The tragedy is that Bill won't be around to argue. I miss you, buddy, and the pastries, too. Those pastries may be a part of the past, but here's something we hope will become a part of the future. A scholarship fund has been established at the University of Southern California in memory of Bill Stout. Donations in lieu of flowers may be made to this fund. Bill Stout Scholarship Fund, USC School of Journalism, University of Southern California, Los Angeles, zip code 900. Eight, nine. We'll be back in just a moment. The star on the sidewalk did sort of get to him. Uh, he smiled and laughed, that sardonic laugh um, that day. But, uh, but uh, after the ceremony was all over, uh, I thought I saw a little tear in his eye. Took him. You like it despite yeah. this? Oh, sure. This only happens about twice a year. Adds a little bit of excitement to the. <laughs> a little bit of excitement. Huh? That's right. How do you like it? I don't much care for it. Stout won virtually every Southern California Broadcast Journalism Award. You may have had some mixed emotions about his star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But he accepted the tribute graciously after his heart attack two years ago. Uh, it is said that Bill had a heart attack last fall. I would just like to mention there's nothing wrong with Bill Stout's heart. Uh, it is the best heart of uh, anybody I know. Bill Stout was 62. John Marshall, Channel 4 News. That part of Bill Corral talked about lives on. It sure does. Yeah. Quite a legacy Rude he leaves us all. To amuse and to insulate us. Then television and those who finance it, those who look at it, and those who work at it may see a totally different picture too late. This instrument can teach, it can illuminate, yes, it can even inspire. But it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends. Otherwise, it is merely lights and wires in a box. A little bit of excitement to the... <laughs> a little bit of excitement. Huh? That's 
<laughs> How do you like it? I don't much care for it. He reported on the events of the world and dug for the truth, honored numerous times for his work. Bill Keene worked with him for 32 years. He was a straightforward reporter. If he saw something happen, he reported it exactly as it happened. Now, a lot of us, of course, when we were younger, had a tendency to maybe exaggerate. Bill Stout was the guy who always would lean over your shoulder and say, hey, wasn't quite that way. Cool it just a little bit. Just give him the facts. Last year, he was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. To end up with a star on, on this street uh, is, uh, is more, more of an honor than I can really handle. Bill Stout, tough guy on the outside, big heart. From LA's Channel 9, this is the 8 o'clock news. Stout was hospitalized last night with what were thought to be flu-like symptoms. He had a history of heart problems. Stout was a fixture on local television news. In recent years, he was known for his commentaries on KCBS. He was a former anchor at the station and earlier had reported for CBS News and KTLA. His Los Angeles TV career dated back to 1953. Stout leaves a widow and eight children. Funeral services are pending. Jerry, you knew him well and have some well. thoughts you'd That's like right. to share with us now. Yes, Pat, the uh, Southland lost a fine journalist this morning. Bill Stout died of heart failure. In life, Bill's heart for news never faltered. He brought a matchless style to his work as a political journalist, but more than that, he was a consummate reporter. When I worked alongside him at City Hall when we covered national newsmakers, he was able to cut through the rhetoric and get to the meat of the matter. He could cover a political convention with ease and understanding. Politicians respected his astute and uncompromising determination, but they couldn't fool him. When I worked with him in Vietnam in 1966, he was an intense, effective network correspondent. He was to Los Angeles what David Brinkley is to the nation's capital. Under the well-known exterior, the well-worn exterior of a Charles Kuralt, Stout had the sensitive nature of a man who saw the issues and defined them clearly. Students of journalism would do well to study his career. For over 40 of his 62 years, he gave us a unique insight into our world. Bill left us a unique insight into our world. He left us a legacy of wisdom. He'll be missed. And when good reporters get together to reminisce, he'll be there.